Talking Detroit Pistons with Detroit Kool Aid, Brandon Dent, beat reporter for the Woodward Pist or for the Woodward Sports for the Detroit Pistons. Joining the show, uh, Brandon. Yes, sir. Appreciate you joining. Look at you, man. You look. You look. Fr- look I think it's fifty this for the morning Woodward. <laughs> yeah, show. absolutely. Uh, you were there last night. You watched. That I was. You, you talked to the, the players after. You get the vibe of the team. And this is why I love having you on, because you, you get a different perspective. You know more than, number one, you know more than anyone at this network by far basketball-wise, but you also know anyone more at this network about the Pistons, because you're there. But I want to ask you, your reaction to last night's game, the Pistons fall to 2-10. and 10. They're 1-5 at home. It's not looking pretty. Uh, and Cade Cunningham leads the NBA in turnovers. And right now he has 60, and the next closest person is Luka with, with uh, 50. So it's not great. It, can you give more of context to what's going on and just your reaction to last night's game? Help me! Yeah, it's disappointing. Help That's the word me. that I'm going to continue to uh, use. Last week on the What We're Pistons podcast, I, I talked to the people, broke bread with them because I said, even though, just based on my perspective, the progress of this team is not mutually tied to wins, this is still a year where you could see them dropping some games despite some injuries that they should have. And you want to see them pull these victories out. Have they been a little bit more competitive and they're dropping some of these games down the stretch, even though they're injured? Yes, but they're not dropping these games just because the other team was just flat out better than them during those moments, but because of mistakes that they're making. And these are the things that, as it relates to progression of this season, when you're talking about what you want to see this squad do beyond just wins, you want to see them start to clean this stuff up. Now, it is only 11 games into the season. And so for a young team, you want to see them begin to get some conception of how to clean these things up, how to play stronger down the stretch. And what Monty Williams said after the postgame, how to value each possession. He said he's been stressing this. And in training camp, it all sounds good. But when you hit that hardwood for the regular season, things change. The other teams start turning up their defense. They may have a few more veteran players. But the one thing I know is that the squad is not trying to lose. So they're going to have to figure something out. They are. And the obvious thing, too, when you look at it, I got to talk to you about this earlier this morning on the phone, and, and it's an interesting stat. I brought this up on From Half Court, but you look at your, your opponent's first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter points, what they're doing defensively. It seems like they're allowing more points as the game goes on. Now, that changed yesterday because the Hawks scored, uh, you know, 38 30 in something in the third and 30 something in the first. But before. They average right now at this point in time, uh, opponents, first quarter points. They give up 27.6 in the first quarter, 28.3 in the second quarter, 30.2 in the third quarter, and it was 30 in the fourth, but it dropped a little bit. It's 29.2. So the point is, they get worse as the game goes on, typically. I mean, last night they were they were pretty bad in the first quarter, but that's how it's been trending. I think the theme of this team is just they can't close games. And a lot of that is because of how that's teams it. are defending Kate. Because they're getting, they're giving Cade respect, and we talked about this. Like they know who Cade is, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I know last night he was four for fourteen, didn't play well, had had some turnovers there, uh, but he had his career high in assists. They know how they're they're learning how to defend Cade. It's okay, we're gonna make all these other guys beat us, not you. Yeah. and it's it's working out for opposing teams. Yeah, they I, need somebody else on this roster, and that's more so. To, you know, well, I'll ask you a little bit after Sam asked this question about the trade deadline. They got to get another dude that if they do choose to defend Cade like this. Someone else can beat you consistently. Yep. Where there's another threat on the court with him at all at all times. That's why, I, for me personally, and I know that a lot of the people they don't want to hear this because the Pistons have been losing for dag near 15 years, and so they just see Pistons across the jersey. They don't have to be as patient as Troy Weaver wants to be. They don't have to be as understanding as Tom Gores is trying to be. They don't have to be as hey, we have to help our young guys learn while we're still trying to win as Monty Williams is going to be. So I get that. But Troy Weaver did say right after the Asar Thompson draft pick, uh, the draft press conference in the media scrum, that this is the season that they're going to assess. They wanted to do this last year so that they could properly put the right pieces around Cade. But that this season is one in which they want to assess, they want to see what's wrong. And I believe that part of that stressing and pressing that Monty Williams spoke of in the offseason and during training camp of putting his team through, I believe we're starting to see that right now. And what it's doing is, it's like I said, it's not mutually. Their progress is not mutually tied to how many wins they have. But what Troy Weaver is able to see from this squad, from the young core. So now he knows exactly. You can't come back with injured vets. You can't come back with old vets. You do have to get a number two. The best K looked was his rookie season. 
when he had Jeremy Grant, who took a large portion of the usage, or at least an equal amount. And with that usage, he was consistent with it. That's the one key. We got guys right now whose usage and time and minutes are high. And as that continues on, their efficiency goes way down. You can't depend on Killian Hayes to start and play 30-something minutes. Right. You just can't. So they're going to have to get a guy. But this season is all about figuring that out. And early on, I think that they figured that out, especially with the fact that we talked about it, man. These teams that the Pistons have played over like the last seven or eight games, they've effectively said, we don't care. It's like that Stephen A. Smith meme, like, I'm here to let you know right now. We don't care. <laughs> they don't care at all about the rest of his team. Stu was wide open for three. He missed, I think, two or three of those. It was wide open. Asar missed one. I looked at the, the starters, the, the box score. And I'll implore all you guys to go and look at that, that box score. Cade is basically playing one on five. Unless he gets to pick and roll, and even then, the type of defense they're running, if it was even a 2 3 zone that they mm -hmm. were running, then you would see a little bit more facilitation or a little bit better facilitation out of Cade Cunningham. But they're, they're doing what's called a, a soft 2 1 2 like zone, man zone principle, and they're blitzing him off of that. They do not care. They're blitzing, hands straight up, and they're obscuring his ability to be able to see. And when he does make the pass, when you want to look at the other stat in terms of turnovers, look at the stat of, us, uh, of potential assists as well. There's potential assists that are left out there quarter after quarter after quarter because even Burks wasn't hitting anything until like literally really like late in that game. When, you, when your team doesn't have anybody else that can realistically go out there and give you that 20 to 25 points consistently a game with Kay Cunningham, you're going to see exactly what you saw last night. And the book is out. They, we all know this. If you go and you run a basic defense on Kay Cunningham, he's eating. That's lunch. I see the skinny butcher up there. That's lunch, bro. That's, that's lunch. I'm just, I'm just being serious. But they know we do not have to care. We don't have to care. And that's what's going on right now. And mm -hmm. Cade has to get less careless. He has to understand that these things are going on. They have to get this right because you can't, you can't let this just fester for the season. Whether that's going out and getting somebody else to assist or whether that's making sure that this team is coached all the way up and valuing every possession, they have to fix it. This is not something, regardless of wins or not, that they need to allow to, to kind of grow. Yeah, uh, Kool-Aid, I apologize for not linking up with you last night, but I was actually in LCA for last night's game, and I will say this, one of my takeaways, and uh, I'm actually going to credit Kuka Heel, who I disagree with on a lot of things on Twitter, he actually <laughs> said, he actually tweeted after the game, you can't lose a home game to the Trey Youngless Hawks, and that's kind of where I'm at right there, and now they're, now unfortunately they do have the worst record in the NBA, but let me... Let me just j just ask this. When it was at one point in the game, despite every single thing that the Pistons were, have been struggling with, despite the things they were struggling with last night, when they got that fast break where Cade Cunningham passed it to Kevin Knox and he dunked it to make to put them ahead by one with about a minute left, the building was almost literally shaking. I'm like, oh it my goodness, loud. we're going to win this game. But alas, they did not. Am I, I think this is the type of game, unfortunately, that can be the difference between a team that can win 30 games and a team that just in terms of win, wins and losses kind of death spirals again. Is that, am I putting too much into this game or no? You're putting a lot into this game. I, like again, I, I would start to raise the panic alarms if the team was healthy in doing this, but they're not. Jalen Duran wasn't there last night. And that's a huge loss. We can't on one hand sit and say, man, we love Jalen Duran. He's the future. And then when he's out, act as if that's not a big piece missing. What if it was Marvin Bagley coming off the bench instead of maybe a Wiseman or some of the other players that they had to rotate in there? These are reasons that they must fix or else they do become excuses. But these are legitimate reasons. DeJounte Murray, I'm not dissing that guy. That guy's just a walking bucket, straight up. He was out there and he put up 32 <clears throat> points. And you know what? I'll ask you guys this question. They shouldn't lose to the Trey Youngless Hawks. But let's just ask, let's just be for real. Do the Pistons have two better scorers on our team, aside from Kay, than DeJounte Murray and Bogdan Bogdanovich. And honestly, if, if, if you want to really get, get granular on this one, Trey Young is not even playing that well. Yeah, that 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 man thinks that he can shoot better than he actually than he actually does. So I'm not saying that the Hawks are better without Trey Young. I'm just saying that they performed serviceably, and Dejounte Murray had one of his best games of the season. So I get what you're saying. Yeah, and yeah. when is when is Bojan, uh, Joe Harris? Could you give us an update, Monte Morris? Like this team, and I know 
You know, we just talked about Bruce Irvin and the help he provides. Yeah, this Pistons team needs help. Uh, they do. Not yeah. saying they're going to fix all the issues, but those are three guys that that can shoot 40 from three. So can you give us a timeline, any updates on those guys? Look, I saw Isaiah Livers. I went to shoot around yesterday. He was looking good. I posted some video to, um, you know, at Detroit Kool-Aid and at Woodward Sports as well on socials. And he's looking good. He's he's going to be a guy that I believe helps him a lot more than we think mm -hmm. if he can stay healthy. Bojan Bogdanovic, he should be back no later than the first week in December. And Monty Morris is already playing three on three with the squad. We've been posting that video as well. They're going to get some help very soon. And, and Monty Williams talked about the fact that he has some tough decisions to make when they do get back. Obviously, Bojan needs to be in that starting lineup. I don't want to hear anything about, oh, bring him off the bench or this, that, and the other. He needs to be in the starting lineup because he's the only other scorer on this team that we know can go out there, no matter what's going on, and get you 20 points easily. That has to happen because Kay Cunningham is getting absolutely blitzed. And Marvin Bagley talked about it. He said... um, effectively that they failed K, that they're not helping him enough when the, when the other teams and the opposing teams are doing this. He said that we now know that that's the game plan. So we all have to step up our games as well as K Cunningham. That means that right. he has to tighten the handle. He has to tighten up the passes. But in terms of help, they're going to get some help here over the next, uh, over the next week or two. Uh, with some of these guys coming back from injury. And I want to ask you, too, for the trade deadline. What, what, should, what should Troy Weaver be thinking on how to improve this team? Because I think the patience thing, it only can last so long. Uh, and, and although I agree with you that last year, Cade not being there made it hard to evaluate a roster without Cade. I mean, he's your franchise player. So now that he's here, you, you want time with a new head coach to kind of see all right, who works and who doesn't around your franchise. But for you and Troy Weaver's timeline, this trade deadline, I think something has to be done. I don't know the extent of it, but now you're hearing more about guys, potential potential players that will be traded, a Zach Levine, a Brandon Ingram, uh, maybe even a Jeremy Grant, to your point, who a lot of Pistons fans did not like, and now looking on the other way, like, maybe we could use Jeremy Grant. But Absolutely. your thoughts on the trade deadline and, and maybe the urgency that Troy Weaver has to have uh, I, this, this trade deadline? Because I'm done looking at Tankathon. I'm done looking at the draft. No more draft. Uh, we're done. This is the thing, and I told you this nuance this morning, and again, I know people do not want to hear it, but if you're a GM of a squad that looks this way, you have to have every single shot at every asset that you can have. You cannot trade back-to-back first-round picks in the NBA anymore. If the Pistons keep this first-round draft pick, and it's a decent first-round draft pick this season, they can trade this year's, not next year's, but the year's after. If they're going to make a huge jump, honestly, it's going to be in the offseason. That's where it's going to be, where you can trade a couple draft picks with nominal or minimal impact to your young core. If they trade at the trade deadline right now and they get a piece of impact, they cannot trade that draft pick right now. They just can't because it has not conveyed to them yet, which means you're also talking about busting up that young core. That's, that's something that people have to think about. You have to. For them to be able to go out there and grab a Brandon Ingram or Zach Levine, you're talking about seriously maybe people like Sasser and Ivy or Stewart or multiple of them on the way out as well as getting rid of some of your bigger pieces, your veteran pieces, because they make the money. Because Bojan's going to have to be included in any trade deadline deal. That's just the truth. Right. So when you start getting into saying they got to make something happen at the deadline, this is why I believe Troy Weaver said he's going to make his splash by next summer. Because just from a logistical standpoint, when you're just looking cap and you're not looking with emotions of this team has to do something right now, they they don't really have the means to do that without messing up their young core right now as well. Yeah, no question. I appreciate you joining Kool Aid. Uh, honestly, it's it's a little it's relieving because we get to talk about this. And uh, again, you understand the urgency the Pistons fans have. Like I yeah. get the frustrations, and the Pistons know the frustrations. They understand. It's not like Charlie Weaver sitting there going, "Oh, we lost another one. Cool." Like they, they understand the urgency, so I they appreciate expected you. They better. They do. They, they did. Uh, so I expect I, I appreciate you joining. You can find Kool Aid all his articles at WoodwardSports.com. You can catch his content at Woodward Pistons, and of course follow him on Twitter uh, or X, whatever you want to call it. Detroit Kool Aid on X. Check <laughs> yes, out all his Pistons <laughs> coverage. Yes, Does a great job. Appreciate you, Brandon. A, a hey, ton, man. Appreciate you all. Awesome. All right, let's, let's go. go. Let's go to break. Uh, when we come back, we'll get into more of Aaron Glenn and this defense. We kind of talked about Bruce Irvin, but I want to ask a question. You concerned about this defense when they face the league? quarterbacks we'll have that conversation what needs to change or maybe you have confidence in that moving forward uh, but first i gotta tell you about our friends over at planet fitness because guys that's where 